What is up guys, it's your boy Rick Kakis, and today, just before the 30th anniversary update launches for Destiny 2 and completely consumes my life for the next couple weeks, I wanted to shed some light on a very interesting story involving a different game that I think deserves a little bit of attention. This is a story about how a game with 600 players kind of just embarrassed the juggernaut that is Destiny 2. And the game in question is Outriders. You remember the 25th Destiny killer game that didn't actually kill Destiny, but that in and of itself is kind of the problem. Outriders is another looter shooter game, so obviously there's going to be comparisons to Destiny 2. I don't know why the Destiny fanbase always is like, oh, this is going to be the next Destiny killer. I just want another game to play in those times when Destiny is kind of dead, like in the middle of the season. There's nothing much going on. I'm always looking for an alternative game to have fun in. And for me, for a short while, that was Outriders. The thing is, Outriders just kind of died. But funny enough, the developers kind of admitted the game was just going to kind of die. And that's because Outriders said up in the forefront that it is not a live service game. What you see is what you get. You're gonna get the game, level up some characters, get to the end game, put together a build, and then just kind of get bored and stop playing. And that is a stark contrast to what a lot of other games are doing with the live service model. You know, games like Destiny, of course, Battlefield, Call of Duty, just you name it, they plan on giving continuous and consistent updates to keep you invested in the game. Now, obviously, that has some upsides. Like, like I said, 30th anniversary is launching for Destiny 2. The game is going to be bumping again. And then in February, Witch Queen comes out. It's going to be bumping. However, a live service game does consume a lot of your time. And too often... The launches aren't very good. I mean, look at Destiny, look at Destiny 2, look at Battlefield 2042. Often, the content that's added with these live service updates, that's the content that should have been in the game to start. And so having a more traditional experience, and in some ways a little bit more of a complete game, it had the full narrative experience, it had you know a separate end game experience, it had a full-fledged loot system right off the bat, you know, it was a little bit of a brush of fresh air until, again, you got bored. But here's where the story gets interesting. Like I said, Outriders really wasn't doing too much for quite a while. You can see here by the Steam charts that in September it averaged only 654 players, and in October it was down to 636 players. And again, that's the average, so the lowest was far below 600. Then out of nowhere, in November, we see a three, almost 400% increase. The peak players goes from 1,000 to 10,000, a 10x increase. What the heck happened? Well, Outriders, out of nowhere, released a brand new free Endgame 2.0 update. And this update added quite a few things that we're going to talk about, but first and foremost... And the reason I'm saying it kind of embarrassed Destiny 2 is because this update added a brand new transmog system to Outriders. You remember when Destiny 2 got its transmog system? Well, it was not well received by the community, and that's because it was so heavily monetized. Bungie was trying to encourage people to spend money to unlock these transmog options by firstly making the free-to-play route incredibly grindy, the quests take forever and you can only have one at a time and they used to cost a bunch of a really hard to get resource. Bungie got so much heat they had to change it so now it just costs a lot of glimmer but still these are not consumer friendly quests, right? And then not only that, but you're actually limited in the amount of free transmog items that you can earn every single season. I think right now you can only have like five or 10 unlockable transmog items, and then you hit a cap if you want more within a certain season. The only way is to pay real money. And then Outriders comes along. Remember, this game is dead. 600 player's average. And then they say, boom, new transmog system, no limits, no cost, no microtransactions whatsoever. And what I'm showing in the background is their new transmog system. And it works 
exactly like that. If you unlock any piece of gear on any of your characters, then you can make any piece of gear look like that unlocked piece. So I can have all legendary items from a completely different character even. I can mix and match. I can just change whatever I want, whenever I want. Dude, I was like, honestly kind of weirded out by the system, especially when I tried to change an appearance of something because it just auto applied like instantly. It's so weird to do that without a big timer because you're spending all these resources, etc. It's just like, oh yeah, just switch it. No, no big deal. It's like, of course it's no big deal because it costs you literally no resources to do so. And so this is actually pretty astonishing. And this is something that should be praised within the gaming community. A game that, you know, you could argue needed the money a little bit more than Destiny came along and gave a much more consumer-friendly transmog system, right? Why do we have to have such a monetized system? Or if there is monetizations, why does it have to be so grindy? Why does the limit have to be so small? And this game is coming along and proving that it doesn't need to be anti-consumer. It can be an awesome, generous, positive addition to the game. Now, of course, there is a whole lot of arguing to be done around, well, what's Bungie doing with the money if they're reinvesting it, adding so much more content? Yeah, you know, that's a fair point. Destiny 2 is significantly more content rich than Outriders. I don't think anyone can make that argument, uh, but it is, again, something worth pointing out and something worth praising when a company does go the ultra generous route. And the transmog system is really just a small part of what this update added. It also removed timers to the kind of end game dungeons, which is fantastic, especially if you go back and beat them solo. Like I went back on my, you know, toxic rounds, Technomancer, the build was still pretty good. I was capable of soloing the max difficulty. I was pretty proud of myself. I was like, oh dang, my build's still pretty good. Went into a multiplayer match and then these other people were using absolutely cracked builds. I, I was doing like no damage compared to these guys. I was like, oh boy, I need to change my build, dude. And it really is a build in Outriders. Like you're seeing Destiny move more towards an actual in-depth build system, especially when they're adding you know, the new subclass systems for uh, light subclasses and so on. However, you know, with Outriders, not only do I have these skills that are upgraded throughout my armor and I have three certain skills that all mesh with each other. I've got weapon abilities that benefit from using my skills. I've got legendary armor that means I do way more damage to uh, frozen enemies. So I've got the frozen turret and like the, you know, frozen explosion ability. And it is a really good feeling when all these things in your build come together and work out for a fantastically powerful experience. And now you're able to achieve this experience easier with this update because, uh, like I said, no timers is going to make things a little bit easier and more loot generous. They've improved the loot system to just make it more generous in general. There's also four brand new maps that were added to the end game as well. It's just a better experience within the end game. And you see that reflected by those player base numbers. You know, we went from, again, a thousand peak players. And now in November and the beginning part of December, you know, we have a pretty solid 10,000 peak players. Now, again, compared to Destiny 2, that's nothing. But it does show that you can kind of resurrect your game a little bit with a great, generous, free update. And again, I think that deserves to be praised, especially in this day and age where I can go and play so many different games and a lot of them for free, like a lot of absolute AAA massive great games, Apex Legends, Warzone, even, you know, Fortnite, I know it's memed on, but still it's a huge game. All these games are completely free. Destiny 2 is free. Outriders is free via Xbox Game Pass as well. Like Game Pass is giving away a ton of games for free. So it's like if a game gets a little too greedy, if I don't want to pay for, the, you know, this big paid expansion or whatever, I can just move to a free game. And so it kind of begs the question, you know, is this the right move in certain scenarios? Would it make more sense? Bungie got in a lot of trouble recently for making people buy the deluxe edition of the Witch Queen to get two dungeons that were coming later in the year. So like a dungeon would be coming out in summer, you know, next year. And you have to have the deluxe edition of the Witch Queen to access it. And people are like, well, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Like, why can't I just, why doesn't it come with that paid season? So you have a paid season in the summer, you have to pay $10 for, and you also have to 
pay for the one that came out in February. It's, it's just a lot of monetization. And again, there's some arguments of like, okay, well, what if you just made this dungeon free? How many extra players would jump in and play it? How many people would convince their friends to get the game and try this new dungeon? How many people that weren't playing would hop back in the game to enjoy this new free dungeon, right? We see the effect on the player base in Outriders, would it have a somewhat similar effect in other games? I know I'm picking on Destiny 2 because that's my main content, but the same applies for so many other games like Battlefield, Call of Duty, all these other games, you know, these free updates are a great conduit for a massive influx of players because there's nothing stopping them. They can just start playing the game, start enjoying that new content for free, build hype around the game, and if they're enjoying the game and having fun, those are the people much more likely to spend money on cosmetic items on your transmog system, etc. Now it should be said that Outriders isn't exactly like purely angelic, they're doing this for a reason, like I was pointing out, to excite the player base to get people back in the game because they have a paid expansion, I believe, uh, or a big expansion coming uh, pretty soon here in the beginning part of 2022. So obviously you want the game in a good place and you rather have peak players of 10,000 than 1,000 going into this expansion. So, in my opinion, just a really interesting story within the space of gaming. What do you guys think of this whole crazy shebang? Let me know in the comment section down below, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it informative, and if you did, please remember to help me out by liking and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to keep up to date with the latest channel activity, be sure to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.